Hey everyone, Jess here, executive producer of Project Loki. Welcome to our March 2024 Fireside Chat, where we talk about upcoming playtest changes and our thinking behind them. Before I get started, if you're watching this video and haven't given us a follow or subscribe, why don't you go ahead and do that? Because it helps us and you get more of these, which I think is a pretty fair trade. Okay, let's get into it. March's playtest is a three day in NA and EU from March 28th to March 30th. Servers will be on from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. PT and GMT with a bonus hour of arena after each day. I'm happy to announce a new game mode experiment besides your regular squad and arena modes, duos. This is pretty much the Project Loki version of a dating simulator, so for anyone who's been asking for one, you're welcome. We've run duos before, but back then it was more of a hecky attempt with minor tuning. This month, we're actively balancing all the things, making changes like lowering boss and vault health, adjusting game pacing, and increasing the speed of leader circles. Basically, everything we can think of has been retuned from four players to two. Combat is obviously much cleaner when it's just 2v2 or even 2v2v2. Lethality is lower, so there are more back and forth skirmishes. And while winning is hard with double the teams, the only person you have to blame is yourself. And maybe your buddy. But in this house, we take accountability for our outcomes. So if you've been trying to get that one friend into playtest, or if you want to try a different flavor of Project Loki, come on in. As we continue to balance PvE versus PvP objectives, one addition I didn't cover last fireside chat but I want to talk about are chests, both normal and evil. We've stuffed some of those really strong red tier powers from a previous test into these evil chests. We really like these powers when they're rare and risky to get, a philosophy we've stated before around balancing PvE and PvP objectives. A neat piece of tech with keys and chests, if you use your key in your inventory, you can have it point to where the chest is. And if all the evil chests have been opened, your evil key will point to the nearest red power holder. Since combat is the delicious chocolatey center at the core of Loki, we're constantly looking for ways to preserve what's working while exploring new opportunities for depth. An area we're particularly excited about is adding more interaction for hero abilities, especially with our combat sandbox. That sounds like a jumble of words, but since you're a captive audience, I get to cook. In most top-down hero-based games, the goal is to pretty much only fight, whether it's in a lane, court, some kind of battle arena. So all hero kits get designed with basically only fighting in mind. And in Project Loki, combat is our core, but there are a lot of other things you need to do to gain an advantage. Traversal is valuable, fortification too, scouting matters. Disengaging from a fight is sometimes more important than starting it. And so we're always thinking about what kinds of interactions and verbs we can add to the Project Loki sandbox for all of you to combine in unexpected ways. Okay, this playtest we're taking a pass at some of our more popular heroes with an eye towards adding depth in their ability interactions. Some examples include things like Kingpin now being able to hook wisps as well as heroes. So now you're always thinking about all sorts of things to grab, not just picks. Shrike Grenade now also boops wisps for the same reason. These might seem like smaller changes at first, but directionally this is where we think the juice is. More open-ended abilities and powers that have you thinking about how to break the game. And we're also adding more depth to hero skill rotations and abilities that you can see on Discord, but I wanted to call out these two as particularly unique. Another change we've been experimenting with is to add more combat states for moments of clear strength or weakness. An example is our new vulnerability state, which is an effect that causes you to take double damage. You become vulnerable when you take certain non-combat actions, like eating food, looting boxes, and death box resurrecting. And this lets us add more risk and urgency to these kinds of actions and acts as a clear aggression signal for opposing teams. We're also testing a combat state called Last Stand, where the last player left alive on your team gains cremation on enemy wisps, making them burn faster and taking longer to pick up. We're still exploring this one, but something we do like is that it adds another conversational layer to getting knocks in our game. Makes you think more. We like making you think. Okay, finally, we've got a few visual improvements to call out this month. We've got a new pass on the HUD where we've reorganized information, updated the ability bar, and added a new treatment to powers and consumables. We've also added some new edge indicators to give you a clearer sense of where allies are at a glance or any time an enemy enters your team's vision while off your screen. UI changes tend to take longer to get used to, but we'd love to hear your impressions after a few hours of play. We've also done a pass at game clarity with gliders, aerial combat, and spiking. Some of you have noticed that trying to hit targets above or below the Z-axis in a top-down game is weird. 
depth perception is hard. I won't go into a whole thing about projectiles and bodies traveling in 3D space with 2.5D camera angle, but the short of it is, we're prioritizing game clarity by giving you a big indicator to shoot at when someone's hitbox is below the z-axis. Shoot that indicator and appreciate the dialed up ceremony we've added for those spikes. We also like spikes. Okay, lots more stuff in the patch notes. Grab a friend who can carry you in duos and I'll see you in playtest.